I feel a value that resonates quite deeply with me is belief. Because we are a regional office, um, it's been obviously quite sort of tricky at times to get our our name out there, to to actually break down doors, break down barriers um, to actually being successful. So to have that belief in us from across the globe and from our regional managers and directors and colleagues has been really helpful and has really supported us over this last year. Uh, Cooper and myself, we both went over with ANZ UK. We both lived. Um, kind of ANZ UK life of going over as a CRT teacher and absolutely loving it and knowing that ANZ UK was there for us, you know, the whole time. So now being on the opposite side, being able to provide that opportunity for educators, I know that when I hand them down, you know, when they arrive in Australia, when they arrive um, at our office in Melbourne, that they are going to have the best um, team looking out for them. Um, so, yeah. I believe, you know, in ANZ UK every day because, you know, I, I live through it and I know that we offer the best service that there is in the, uh, in the industry. All of our B Great values truly align with the way I approach my work, but exceptional is a special one for me. You see, to me, exceptional encompasses all of the B Great values because in order to be exceptional, you must believe in yourself, your purpose, and the work that you do. You must empower yourself and others. You must seek to cultivate and foster strong relationships with schools, educators, and your team. And speaking of team, you must strive to always be a great team player and have a positive attitude no matter the circumstance. This year, it was especially important to me to make sure that not only did I meet the goals set by myself and my team, but I also exceeded them as we were all challenged in various ways, both in our personal and professional lives. With the work that we do, I find it so critical to show up and put my best foot forward at all times because what we do on a daily basis goes a long way, even if we don't see immediate results. I know that what I do today will impact the future of our company, so I strive to always create memorable experiences with everyone that I interact with because I am a representation of Scoop. These are just a few ways that I strive to be an exceptional team member of the Scoop family. Uh, so the, the value growth has been a, a massive uh, part of my life at ANZ UK. Um, so I originally started with the academy program in uh, the middle of last year. Um, coming from a teaching background and really having no knowledge of um, recruitment um, was yeah, a big learning curve. Um, I think for, for me the value of growth has just been uh, taking every opportunity uh, possible to have a go, um, to embrace feedback and to, to learn as I go. Hey guys, um, my name's Kat and I'm in the business services team. Um, I think working in a completely different state um, from your team has definitely shown its struggles, um, but it's also given me you know, a lot of learning opportunities um, as well and having that growth mindset um, allows me to take on new challenges and processes within the team, but also outside of it as well. Relationships to me and my team are very important. Being a part of the finance team, it's crucial that we build strong relationships with a number of different stakeholders so we can deliver on our promise of providing an exceptional service. Internally, it's important that we have strong relationships with each other in our own finance team, the consultants, the managers and team leaders, as well as the dev team, practically everyone that works in the office. Externally, this includes our schools and centres, as well as our suppliers. And globally, for our, our team and myself, that also includes the USA schools and staff, Scoot Education, the UK office, education personnel in New Zealand. By having these strong relationships, both internally and externally, it creates a good workplace culture, which motivates us to achieve our 2025 vision. One of the roles at EP that um, I do is mentoring teachers through the recruitment process um, when they've encountered barriers um, to finding a role. So the relationship is really critical. 
Um, it involves a huge amount of listening in order to find out the teacher's individual situation. And it's often not in that first call or meeting that you actually get the full picture. It's, it's when the trust sort of develops over time that the teacher will open up and share the real situation and emotions and factors that, that they're actually dealing with. I think it's also about being honest and real with the teacher, but in a caring way. You know, sometimes we're having to paint a picture um, that isn't necessarily what the teacher wants to hear, and but by bringing honesty to the conversation, it means we can problem solve and make a plan and, and look into opportunities. I just wanted to finish off with a Māori whakatauki, uh, which says, he kai o te rangatira, he kōrero, he kōrero, he kōrero. What is the food of the leader? It is knowledge, it is communication. And I think that's just so true. You know, we all bring um, to a situation our own window and learning the art of communication where each person's needs are met while still retaining the positive relationship is not always easy. You know, sometimes it means letting go of being right in order to retain the relationship. Sometimes it's about picking your time to actually communicate. I know having a strong relationship always makes the hard conversations easier though. You know, relationships are not static, they continually need to be worked on and developed and, and I think we all play a part in doing that. Kia ora. Hi, I'm Kevin. Now I've been with Scoot Education going on three years. I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I know and understand our core values, be great. But as a former educator, I must admit, there is one value that resonates a little bit more than the others, and that's relationships. As a former teacher, anyone can tell you that the key to success in the classroom is building authentic relationships with your students. Now, unbeknownst to myself, when joining the team, that this will be the core value that allowed me to truly be successful in my role. I remember it was my first year joining the team, uh, started starting off as a consultant. And I, it was initially a cold call. I called this independent school and I was talking with the head of school. At this time, I was just under, it was during the summertime, and so she didn't have any needs, but I just wanted to uh, have a chance to come by, check out the campus, and really get to know her. And I did that, we really connected and hit it off. Now after that, I spent many days at the school getting to know the faculty, understanding the community, and granted, none of these were an expectation of myself, but I wanted to live what we preached, and that was to be able to put the right teacher in the right classroom. And the only way that this could be a possibility is by really understanding the inner and outer workings of each individual school in which we work. So as the year progressed, she ultimately ended up needing an educator, and we were able to fill that position. But this wasn't a fairy tale happy ending. The educator wasn't successful. And the head of school could have easily stopped working with us because essentially we didn't hold our end of the bargain. But because of the foundation that was created, the foundation that was built, she came right back to us and, and had us to help her in uh, find uh, that vacancy, fill that vacancy. And then ultimately she introduced us to over 10 plus schools. And after talking with her, she told me it was because of the foundation and she said she understood why that teacher wasn't successful and it was not a direct result of our relationship or anything that we had done. Since I've been with this organization, I have countless stories like that. It's because we put our stakeholders first. And for me, that's the kids. Ultimately, it is my goal to ensure that every child has an adult in front of them, whether it's for a permanent or a substitute position who will care just as much about them as I would. I'm happy to be a part of this team. I'm super excited where we're going. And again, relationships, building, maintaining, and cultivating relationships is the true key to our success.
When I was originally looking for a new role, finding a company that promotes empowerment was something that really was important to me. And coming into ANZ UK, you know, I found it's not just a value, but it is actually something that's a daily focus of ours and is implemented in a real way that makes sense with your environment. You know, being empowered for me is being able to play to my strengths, leading initiatives in areas that I know I'm good at or can help others with, but also being pushed outside of my comfort zone and given the strategies to actually succeed in these areas. So it might be difficult conversations with clients, candidates, or even providing that feedback amongst the team, which is always a bit tricky. Um, but you know, I think empowerment's not only taking and getting things from other people, it's also giving that empowerment back to your colleagues. So having that trust in them, knowing that they've got the skills and having those open, honest conversations. I think a good example of this, recently I had to give some feedback to a client from one of our educators about their educators. So while it was a tricky situation and I was a little bit nervous, uh, my team leader Tara and I, we sat down, we mapped out how the conversation would go and you know had a few different dot points. And that conversation ended up being really effective and a good way for me to progress that relationship because I was open and honest with her. And then from that, Chloe also ended up having the same situation as me. So I was then able to use those skills I had learned to sit down with her, coach her through the different ways the conversation could go and how we could manage that. And her conversation ended up being really effective as well. So I think empowerment is such an important part of learning and growth. And it's good to see that ANZ UK doesn't use it just as a value, but something that we implement each and every day. One thing about attitude and a great attitude is it requires a very little amount of natural talent. And it's something that you really do choose. You choose to have a particular attitude about a situation and you, you don't you don't need to have any, any prerequisites to have that attitude. Um, and with that, I think it's it's also one of the single greatest indicators of success in a role is the actual attitude that one has from the outset and throughout a role. Um, and uh, there's other things that attitudes can do. So they can impact your self-esteem significantly, especially if early on in a role. So starting on um, can significantly impact how you feel about the work you're doing and the impact you're making, even though initially it may be very modest while you're learning. Um, but a good attitude just makes it much more likely that you're going to stick at a task that you're not good at right away. Like very few of us are good at things right away that we start, that we're new at. Um, and having a good attitude is something that's likely to magnify your impact on a goal such as our team goal. Um, so that while, well, even while you're fresh, if you still relish every opportunity to help the team, and make positive impact, the degree to which one contributes toward that goal is exponentially increased. Another thing that attitude, having a great attitude does is it'll breed opportunity. So having the right attitudes means you'll, you're not focused on the wrong thing, which can in some cases like, like self, self interest or self, self, uh, self development that's not focused on team. Uh, in some cases that can give you blinkers and it can give you blinkers to other other ways that you may be able to help the team, which in themselves represent opportunities for personal and professional growth for you. Um, another thing about attitude is it's infectious. Um, it, the whole team, when the whole team's attitude is aligned, as soon as one member might exhibit something that's contrary to that shared belief and attitude, it's easy and in some ways it's natural to address it before it becomes something more damaging. So that's, that's just a few reasons why I believe attitude is, well, why attitude's my favorite and, and most impactful for me and has been throughout my time at ANZ UK. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of it. So being in the Global Opportunities team, I get to witness all parts of the business and all teams coming together um, with one common goal, which is to see exceptional educators and exceptional learning experiences for children and students around the world. And what we firstly need to do to make sure that um, that, that happens 
is to ensure that the educators that we work with are prepared, um, they're welcomed with open arms, they're excited and they're confident when they get to a new country. Um, and in turn, then they, um, they have a positive impact in the classroom. So what I find to be um, some of the most important things when it comes to working as a team across different time zones and across different workspaces, um, as I've seen a lot of successes and I've seen a lot of challenges with this over the years um, in my role. But yeah, what I would say are my most, um, the most important things um, to work well as a team is communication. Nothing is too small to communicate when you're working across um, different global offices. And also to um, share successes and celebrate all the little wins. To do that and, and to keep everyone in different teams across the world involved keeps up the momentum of what we do um, on a daily basis. And it reminds us all of, of the massive impact that we have as a team on, um, on education around the globe. Um, something that I do to keep one team always at the forefront of my mind when I'm um, having conversations with educators is to always ask myself and, and ask the educator what more can we do as a global team and, and we um, yeah provide for this educator and for this educators network other educators that they know. You never know where um, a conversation might lead and you don't know what doors that might open for, for us as as consultants, but also, um, and more importantly, really for that educator as well. Talking about all the options and all the other teams that we work with um, at ANZ UK and, and Scoot and EP and everything that we do may, you know, spark a light bulb in an educator's um, mind. It may have them speaking about different opportunities to their friends and their network and, and really help us to meet our 2025 vision um, and open, yeah, exciting doors for them as well. Um, yeah, basically to, to round up, we are all equally important cogs in the dream team machine that is ANZ UK, Scoot and EP.